Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So I was kind of holding off on doing this video, hoping that someone other than Ble Bleeding Cool would cover it, but it looks like it's, uh, I think Wes from Thinking Critical did a video. It's uh, mainly, I've just mainly seen people uh, virtue signaling about it on Twitter, but before I start, Jawbreaker's Forever graphic novel. Just passed uh, 4,000 backers the other day. Iron Size 3, Impossible Stars 2, and I'm still working my way through this guy Gardner. And then I'm just reading lots of comics. I went to go find the first issue of Walt Simonson's run on Fantastic Four. <coughs> and I completely forgot that he... The first issue is not the first issue. It's the fourth issue. The first three issues, he had a uh, Rich Buckler doing the art, and it's just like... I'm good. <laughs> Even for free, I'm not reading that shit. Sorry, I just... No, no. Uh, so, um, the other day, uh, Jason Pearson went off on Afua Richardson. And I gotta say, I haven't seen anyone mention this. Afua completely held her own. I'm so used to women in the industry in the last five years immediately running for help and saying they're abused and everything and she just went you know just punch for punch with them not literal punches you know talking on uh, Facebook it was and so uh, I'm a little bit familiar with Afua she's been in the industry for 17 years uh, Jason's been in for 32 and we're gonna look at their uh, I miss comic book DB so much you could sort by chronological here it goes by a title, <coughs> and if it says something like 1990 to 1993, then you got to click on it again. L let's just put it this way. In 32 years, Jason Pearson has 246 credits in the mainstream comic book industry. In 17 years, Afua Richardson has 38, most of which are covers, variant covers to be specific. So uh, she was posting, and he just, and these are their, you know, qualities of art, whether you like one or not. I like Jason Pearson's stuff sometimes, but there's uh, just going way back to the 90s. With body bags, there was an ugliness to it, an ugliness of, not of the art, of, the, like, it just, it made me feel bad. Um, I was never really a fan of Afua Richardson. I think I followed her on Facebook way back in the day. I remember her being very pleasant and professional and she would just kind of show off her work. So he just goes off on her um, and he said, <coughs> he says, uh, you know, don't come into my industry without being vetted, which is just weird. Oh, for, what I was going to say before is that if anyone knows Jason Pearson, he's been known for having a pretty bad case of bipolar disorder. That's been known for at least a decade. I mean, like, Publicly known. It sounds like people who worked with him have known literally for 30 years. He used to work with Guy Jean that was like Cully Hamner, Adam Hughes, and I guess he had falling out with all or most of them. He still got work, um, even as recently as... Uh, this, this is what I'm reduced to. Searching... Okay, so there's one credit in 2022, which was... Whatever. Oh, it looks like it was DC... And then uh, you, I, <coughs> you go to 2021, just get the same one. 2020, he had two. Again, it looks like it's just covers. And Afua has, you know, as you can see, you know, with about half the length of her career, she has about, what, like an eighth as many credits? But it sounds like he was getting jealous for whatever reason. And it also sounds like he was really strongly having an episode. Uh, of his uh, bipolar disorder. So he just kind of goes off and it's it's very sexist. It's very rude um, Everyone's kind of dancing over the fact that Afua just you know went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him um, and uh, But then I saw her You know respond here and she she was uh, saying, you know um, uh, So they were talking about so Jason Pearson said Afua Gets work because she's female, she's black, she's attractive. Jason Pearson is also black. Um, and um, 
uh, it just became one of those weird things, as they say, where it's like, you know, she's been around for a while, you know, like George Bush was president when she got into the industry. I have some, I mean, some people have heard of her. It's not, it's not really a career. There's, there's no way she's making any bills off of 38 credits in 17 years. Even Jason Pearson, I don't know where he gets his money from, but for the last several years, it's like a handful of covers. Literally, even if they pay him $2,000 per cover, which I think very few people are getting right now, he's making his money somewhere else, doing commissions, whatever. I know he has a, a Kickstarter that's late. Um, but what I really liked was Afu was talking. She was saying like, you know, oh, you just get this because you're pretty. And then she's like, hey, you know, people feel what they feel. But I went under an alias and posted online for years to get honest critique about my techniques. It's okay. Apparently, I'm pretty, en pretty enough not to need skills. I've been busting my hump needlessly all this time. Ha, ha, ha. So, uh, Afua's stuff is, I would call it okay. Um, one of the problems is she just hasn't gotten enough work to get enough road miles to really improve. I mean, when you, when you intermittently get one to three variant covers a year, you're not, I mean, that was a deal back in the 80s and 90s. You would see someone, oh, they did an annual, they did some covers, they did a backup story, Marvel Comics Presents. Okay, fucker, now you're doing monthly comics. And that was 22 pages and usually a cover every single month. And you saw two things. You saw them either flame the fuck out or they got really good really fast. Specifically, I'm thinking about uh, Dale Keown. I mean, he went on to the Hulk and he was good from the beginning. But you just saw him skyrocket. You know, uh, Jim Lee, all these people. That you put someone on a monthly book. They're, they're getting constant feedback. They're seeing their stuff in print. Three months later, they're like, oh, shit, that thing I thought was going to work, it didn't work. But this other thing that was really simple and fast, everyone loves that. So um, so what I'm trying to say is I don't consider Afua to have actually had a career. She's done some work over almost 20 years, a handful, essentially. Essentially about two or three assignments uh, per year. Uh, but this is the other thing she said that I really liked. I know there are a million artists better than me. That's what makes this industry great. I have to get better every day. But it's not just about art. It's about the artist. I put a lot of care in my work. Research and make media to support it. Build websites. Make videos. Tour. I think she's going talking about going to conventions. And so um, we're in a weird situation in which you have a very troubled artist who I would say is objectively better with much more on his resume. He's had, you know, significant works in his career. And then you got a Fua who, you know, not to be harsh, hasn't done much. Um, she's done a couple of covers. They usually pick her when it's black characters. She draws the women looking pretty much like her. Even, even when she draws a, a white woman like Captain Marvel, it's like, it looks like her, you know, it's like the jaw and the, and the, the shoulders. It's like, okay, so, all right, so you look in the mirror when you draw, that's fine, but you got to branch out and it just looks like it didn't happen for her. Um, the, uh, the Jason Pearson thing I'm attributing to just having just a acute episode of his bipolar disorder. But, you know, some people have talked about, you know, hey, what he said was really out of bounds, but he did have some points. And then you also saw a whole bunch of mainstream pros doing these blind items usually and saying like nobody has to vet you if you make a comic by hook or by crook you're in it you're in the industry well that's great except for you all have been saying i mean mark brooks was basically saying the exact opposite to eric july like a week ago that's what you said to me for half a decade oh yeah you can sell you know millions of dollars of comics but uh, you're not on the stands well your book went on the stands two years ago and it's still there it never left. You didn't sell a single copy. So I was very, uh, I was very, I was looking at it with a jaundiced eye when everyone was like uh, trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, be like a hero for Afua who did a good job of defending herself. She's fine. Uh, Jason Pearson is, as far as I could tell, he's had a lifelong <coughs> issues. <coughs> it looks like his mainstream work pretty much dried up probably because he was late probably because he has you know 
uh, but oh, so I forgot to say, she said it's not about it's not just about the art, it's about the artist. It's about um, are you easy to deal with? Are you fun to work with? Are you? I mean, there are artists I love who have shortened my life. <laughs> they have shortened my life. The wear on my heart, the stress on my heart. I'm dying earlier. Two weeks, two months, two years, I don't know. But the stress I've gone through with some artists, you're like, hey, I like you, but I got <laughs> I don't have enough time left for this type of stuff. Maybe we should, you know. Do but um, uh, so I do understand that part where she's basically saying, you know, hey, you know, you're lashing out at me, but maybe it's because your career is not doing as good as it used to do because you're always lashing out at other people. Maybe stop with the lashing out. I saw a real lack of empathy, though, to Jason Pearson. If you got bipolar disorder, you got bipolar disorder. You got it. Like, there's no getting rid of it. It's like I was reading this stuff about OCD. And they're like, stop trying to get cured. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is how your brain works. This is how it's structured. This is how the chemicals are balanced. You know, this is how your thought patterns. This is how the synapses fire. It's like asking your hand to not be a hand. You know, you just got to deal with it. You got to mitigate it. And so I saw just absolutely no empathy at all for Jason Pearson. I saw people saying like, oh, you want you to double up on your meds? It's like, well, that sounds like a overdose to me. You know, no, don't double up on your meds. But maybe this is a sign you need to go to whoever's, you know, I hope he's getting some sort of medication. It's not my business. But uh, to say like, hey, man, I just had an episode. Let's work through this. Maybe we've got to tweak your prescription. Maybe we've got to switch you to something else. Maybe we've got to put you with some sort of new therapy. But um, it was a sad, ugly situation overall. I thought Afua handled herself quite well. She defended herself quite well. It was very transparent what 99% of people were trying to do was just make it about them. And, oh, look at me. I care so much. Well, you know, if you cared so much about Afua, she has... 38 credits in 17 years. Could probably help out with that. She's, you know, in the last... Oh, four. So that, yeah, that's a probably thing. Probably, uh, you know, Jason Pearson's like, I have one credit this year, or maybe it's even last year. She has four just this year. And so he's getting a little... But that's not a lot. That's, that's not a lot. So she had... Again, it's hard to tell because they do this thing where it's like a spread over multiple years. But yeah, it's a handful. I'm going, I'm, if you're not looking at the screen, I'm, uh, okay, so it looks like she had a flurry of work, but again, it was just covers. Again, she's not that in demand. Even if she got $1,000 for every cover, and that's highly unlikely, it's $8,000 for the entire year. That's not even part-time. So for all those people who cared so much about Afua and had no empathy at all for Jason, this might be the time to uh, get her some regular work so she can have that, you know, big spike in ability that is associated with constant monthly work. Or you guys are just, you know, grandstanding. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Jawbreakers Forever graphic novel. Man, that looks good. Man, that looks good. Oh, that looks beautiful. Just, as a publisher, you see your the covers of your books literally thousands of times. So I, I never let a cover be like, oh, it's okay. It's close enough. If it's close enough, I'm going to see close enough thousands of times over the next you know, couple decades. No, every cover has got to be perfect. Um, so uh, Ironsides 3, Impossible Stars 2 uh, combo campaign. And uh, I have a review of Shang-Chi over on my other channel. Thanks for watching.